it will never be about what you do or what you have not done. It's all about what I have done, yeah. right? And straight away, he was corrected. So there is correction in grace, but God does not correct you with, with accidents and car wrecks and disease and sickness. That's how He corrects you. Yeah. But it is a correction, but it's still uplifting when God corrects you. Yes. you, know, you, you, you learn, you, it humbles you, you have a right perspective, but it corrects you. So there is correction. I just want to say that the, the idea of talking about the finished work of the cross sitting in front of God's finished creation. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of what we painted on some canvas somewhere, what God created with his own voice. Mm -hmm. And so basically this is, this is kind of a big day for me. So let's, let's start with the most wonderful thing that we could ever start with, the person of Jesus and Amen. talk about grace. Amen. Yes, you know, on my way here, the Lord gave me a verse uh, Psalms 36, verse 6, and it says, Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and uh, I've, it's my, the assignment of my life to proclaim the gift of righteousness yeah. made available through the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. That today we are righteous not by what we do, we are righteous because Christ died for our sins. Yeah. And He took our sin so that we can receive His righteousness. And He got what we deserve so we can we don't get what, what we deserve, yeah. but what He deserves. Mm. And He got what we deserve. That's grace, unearned, undeserved favor. And what better place to preach that than this great mountains? I'm sure that David, you know, in Israel, for them, mountains is really like this. Yeah. Yeah. It is not like a, like a hill. Right. When he says great mountains, it must have been referring to the Colorado mountains. <laughs> <laughs> so but, with, uh, the, here we are. With, with the amazing shot that we have on the screen right now with the mountain behind us, what, what psalm did you read on your way in again? Just Psalms 36, 36, verse 6. Yeah. And it says, uh, right in the same psalm, it says, And thou preservest mm -hmm. man and beast. And the very next verse says, How great is your loving kindness, O Lord. Therefore the children of man put their, tr their trust under the shadow of your wings. Mm -hmm. Now, that verse, that verse is from the old King James, but the word loving kindness in, in Hebrew, in which the Old Testament is written, is the word chesed. Mm -hmm. And chesed, even our Messianic believers, friends, they read from their New Testament in Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. but, but in the New Testament, everywhere chesed is mentioned, it is grace. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, grace and truth came by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Chesed ve amet. Mm -hmm. So chesed, how great, David says, how great is your chesed? Therefore, the sons of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Beautiful. We are getting to talk about the finished work of Jesus in front of the finished work of Jesus, <laughs> the beautiful yeah. mountains. So uh, <laughs> this is a big day for me. Great scripture to start with, by the way, Joseph. And as we are here, uh, this is the first time this airs is December 2nd, 2019. We're welcoming you right here to a beautiful part of Southwestern Colorado. Okay, let's get into uh, something. We were with you not long ago and heard you speaking uh, about kind of, you, you, you started in Isaiah 60, okay? Mm. And it, it reminded me and, and I, wanted to, I wanted to uncover another facet of grace and mm. it has to do with an understanding of protection. Yeah. Many people are concerned about this and that and the other thing and travel concerns and warnings and mm -hmm. all the things that, that are, are issued, you know, as, and, and people could be anxious about matters like that. Mm -hmm. And you've written an entire book. And so I want to uh, reference the prayer of protection, your, your book that you wrote on this subject, but you recently preached it. It was so powerful. We got to sit there and, and see you uh, minister that live here in America and start with that. Uh, and let's just, um, just, just mm -hmm. let me sit here and, and, and enjoy this because I've been looking <laughs> forward to this for a long time. So just start and uh, let's get into this. Yeah, the, the Word of God tells us in Isaiah 60, Arise, shine. You know, we have many songs written on this. Mm -hmm. uh, for your light is come 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. But what many fail to realize is when this will happen, the very next verse tells us, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. And I think that we, we live in, an, um, today's, in today's world, we can see, literally see darkness covering the earth and gross darkness there, I believe, is the, the uh, immorality and the signs of the times that we live in. We are seeing it all around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than ever, people are living in, in gross darkness. But the Bible says when this happens, the glory of the Lord will arise upon us and mm -hmm. our light shall be seen. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are in an in a auditorium and, and you switch off all the lights in that auditorium, someone just switch on a little flicker of light. No matter where you are in the, in the environment, you can see that light. Yeah even a small flicker. So when darkness covers the earth, it's our greatest opportunity to demonstrate the light of Christ mm. in our lives. In fact, there is a parallel in the Old Testament when the children of Israel were in Egypt. The Bible says the second last plague before the death of the firstborn, before the institution of the Passover was deep darkness. It was a thick darkness. And, and it was such a darkness that covered Egypt that the Bible says they can't see each other nor their hands in front of their face. Mm. It must be supernatural darkness because, yeah. um, you know, if it's, it can just be dispelled with, with light, they will switch on, the, I mean, right. you know, they will cause the light to come forth with their lamps and all that. But obviously they can't do that. It's a supernatural darkness. But at the same time, God made a clear line of demarcation between His people and the people of Egypt. So this is good news for the times we live in because God is always paralleling, parallel, uh, paralleling history from Genesis, Exodus, and we are seeing that happen again in our times. And I believe that before the Lord comes for us, we are in a time of deep darkness. Yeah. But at the same time, the Lord is showing forth the glory mm -hmm. of His Son in the church. Yeah. And, and, the, and the verse says that when thick darkness covered Egypt, but the children of Israel had light in all their dwellings. Mm. In other words, that light is also supernatural light because yes. if, if that light can be caused by lighting a lamb, then the Egyptians will also avail themselves of that means. Sure, right. they can. So when this happens, when darkness covers the earth and we are seeing that happen, we'll see our families come together. We will see, in fact, that same chapter in Isaiah that says uh, when darkness covers the earth and it says, lift your eyes when God's glory shines yeah. on you. Your sons and daughters will come from afar. Hmm. There's gonna be a family blessing, light in all our dwellings. I love that, light yes, in know. all our dwellings mm -hmm. when darkness covers Egypt. This is um, one of the themes of your ministry, Joseph. Yeah. I subscribe to your daily mm -hmm. uh, email. It comes to my phone every day. And so I read something from you most every day. I, I read them all, sometimes I read two or three in a day, but but most every day I'm reading something from your ministry. And so this is a main theme for you. And, you know, you're, you're starting by referencing this, this, this story in the, in the Old Testament and the children of Israel and all that. But what we're really talking about is the idea that Christians can have a supernatural level of assurance mm -hmm. and, and, and safety and, and mm -hmm. other things. And, you know, I, I remember reading in one of your emails about a testimony of one of your uh, members of your church in Singapore and that they were, you know, in a, in a very bad situation. You tell the yeah. story. It was a, some kind of an explosion yes, that that's happened. That's right. Uh, in uh, August, August the 5th in 2003, um, it, it, this event happened in Jakarta, Indonesia, a suicide bomber. All right, uh, blew up a car bomb, and uh, and the entire lobby was decimated. You know, it was like uh, the bomb just went through, and and this member, uh, this ch our church member who was there at the lobby at the same time, mm -hmm. he said that uh, he just heard a sudden, deafening, loud explosion. He saw a body fly across in front of him, mm -hmm. and uh, when all the dust settled, and the deafening noise was just lingering, he said he looked at his at his clothes. It was splattered with blood, but it wasn't his blood. Mm. He was unscathed. He was unharmed. Because at the same time when the bomb went off, he walked right behind a pillar. Mm. Mm. Now talk about right place, yeah. right time. Yeah. And this is what we can believe God in these last days when danger is abounding, 
when there's all kinds of uh, attacks of the enemy and we're seeing it happen even to the body of Christ and leaders and even pastors that are taking their own lives, you know, yeah. like a, a darkness, a d deep depression coming on people and all that. We need to trust the Lord for His protection Amen. upon us and upon our, our families, upon our children, upon the people of our church. And literally when the world gets darker and darker, the church will get brighter and brighter. Yes. Now, when it comes to right place, right time, Matt, <laughs> all your smarts and your intelligence cannot put you at the right place right. at the right time. Yeah. You can be a professor of Harvard and you can be, you know, you have all the, the IQ uh, levels that you have conquered and, mm -hmm. and met the Mensa test, but no smarts can put you at the right place at the right time. And there's a verse in the Bible. In fact, I, I know this uh, by heart because it's 9-11. Ecclesiastes 9-11. Mm. Uh, it says that... Uh, uh, Solomon says by the Spirit, I've observed something under the sun. He says that the swift is not always the one that wins the first mm. place. The battle is not to the swift. Uh, riches is not to men of understanding. I've observed that the battle is not to the strong. Mm. But time and chance happen to them all. Mm. Right place, right time. And the Hebrew word there is kara, which is actually a, a, a chance happening. A good happening, hmm. a happening that happens from God to you. Wow. And, and that's what, uh, when uh, Abraham's servant was sent to find a bride, he didn't know who the bride would be. And this is what he prayed in Hebrew. It says, Lord, give me success as I stand here by the well. The word success there is actually the word kara. Give me a, a, a chance happening. Mm. Wow. Give me a, a, a divine appointment. Mm a right place, right time. And the, at the right time of all the women in the village, Rebecca came out. Yeah. So this is what we need in the, our last, these last days, to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah. But I surely am in the right place <laughs> at the right time. <laughs> we think so. We are in southwestern Colorado, this beautiful location here. Joseph Prince, we're connecting the idea of grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, right. the grace-based understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're getting to do it uh, here in front of the finished work of, of God himself. Um, the idea of grace-based living and protection is right. our subject. Continue the thought of how that all happens. Yeah. In my book, um, uh, The Prayer of Protection is based entirely on Psalms 91. Okay. And, and I, I believe that God had Psalms, of course, the chapter divisions we know is from man, but you know, God had his, his hand, of course, here and there, you know, for sure, even the chapter divisions, I believe that. In Psalms 91, verse 1, and that's 911, mm. is God's call, yeah. you know, and, and, and wake up call even to us, right? That He says, when danger abounds, when the enemy is attacking, right? There's a place called the secret place of the Most High. And uh, he who dwells in this secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and that's Shaddai in Hebrew, and uh, he will dwell in the shadow of his wings. All right? And the Bible says, uh, the shadow of the Almighty under the Most High, His wings. And all the Hebrew names of God is there. Hmm. There is the Most High, El Elyon. There is Shaddai. I will say of God, of the Lord, Yahweh. He is my God, Elohim. But God doesn't stop at four. The number of grace is five. So where we find the fifth name in that psalm? Right at the last word. The last word of the psalm says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Salvation is the name Yeshua, mm. the name Jesus. <laughs> so you have the five names of God right there in Psalms 91. But how is this connected to grace? Because many a times when we hear this being taught, it is like the secret place is a, is a place where the elite few, mm. you know, the uh, Matt Crouches mm. and the Pope mm. and the Billy Grahams, <laughs> 
<laughs> that uh, sentence has uh, never been said uh, before. Go uh, ahead. The ones, <laughs> and, and I mentioned you first. And they are the ones that made it to the secret place. You know, yeah. it's like uh, especially holy yeah. few. And, and that's the, 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 the idea left behind. If you want to be in the secret place, these are the things you got to do. Mm -hmm. These are the things you have to get right. You got to make sure there's no uh, uh, unconfessed sin in your life. You got to make sure. And most people just, you know what? I guess I'll never be, be protected. Mm. Yeah. And when, when actually that, that verse is for every child of God. Yeah. That dream of the psalmist, he who dwells, the word dwells is to sit down in the secret place of the Most High, Elion, shall abide under the shadow of the Shaddai, the Almighty. We are there now because of what Christ has done. Yeah. We have been crucified with Christ. We are dead with Christ. We've been raised with Christ and we are made to sit together with Christ. Mm. Our present position is seated with Christ. Where do you think it is? Mm. If it's not the secret place of the Most High. Yeah. So the Christian life begins with a sitting down. In Ephesians, it says you have to sit down and then you walk worthy of the Lord, of your high calling. How well you walk before the Lord is how well you rest, you sit. Mm. How well you are able to experience and enjoy the finished work of Christ. Beautiful. And then it's going to affect your walk. Yes, your walk in holiness, your walk in the Spirit. And then the final part of Ephesians, then you can stand against the powers of darkness. Mm. But it all starts with sitting down. And uh, I just want to say that as, as a believer, if you're born again, you are there. Mm. It's not just for the Matt Crouchers and the right, Pope. Right. All right? It is, it is for everyone who is born again. Yes. You are there. Yes. You are there. And uh, we start with the finished work. You know, God says you are complete in Him. Now, walk out your completeness. Mm. God never puts our completeness as a finishing post. Right. It is a starting point. You must realize you are complete in Christ. Now walk. Beautiful. Walk out of that completeness. Mm. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Uh, the Prayer of Protection. Matt Crouch and the Pope <laughs> uh, recommend this book. Um, <laughs> and Living Fearlessly in Dangerous Times. So we're connecting basically a understanding of the finished work of God, by the way, with the finished work of God kind of in the background back there. Beautiful. I, I love this kind of, I love the shot down here where that mountain is back there. It's just tremendous in the fire. By the way, Pastor Joseph, this is really Colorado. That's real snow. That's a real yeah. fire. You're, you're, you're uh, I'm confirming here. that, right? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> It's real I, I'm trembling a little bit. So for real. I told you, I real told you, put your jacket on. So we're connecting uh, basically grace based understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to get circle back to that in one second and protection. It's a main theme of your ministry. Okay. For the, for the viewer that just tuned in or what do you mean? What does, what does the phrase mean? grace-based Christian. What does that mean? That means uh, he does everything with the understanding that he's not trying, for example, even to pray, your prayer life, when you pray. Are you praying grace-based prayers? Are you praying uh, for victory? Are you, are you praying from victory? It makes a lot of difference. Yeah. For example, some of the teachings that, that teach you that you got to do certain steps and take five steps, seven steps before you can come to the secret place of the Most High. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You start from a, a position of defeat. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get what you already have. Mm -hmm. You are trying to be what you already are. Mm -hmm. And one of the most frustrating thing is if you are in a house and you're trying to get into the house, but you are in the house, you only have to have your eyes open to see you are in the house. So the way you pray the prayer to be in the protection of God is just to thank Him Father, I thank you that I'm in the secret place of the Most High. Mm. I'm in Christ, your Son. And I thank you that no evil will befall me, nor my family. No plague will come near my dwelling. It is, a, it is out of faith. Yeah. That's grace-based prayer. It is not just, oh God, please, please, Lord, please. You know, I, I, I so want you to protect me and my family. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that kind of prayer is desperate prayer. And many a times, uh, you know, we know in our hearts, like we don't have the assurance after we pray that prayer that, that God heard us. Why? Because it's not faith. Mm -hmm. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the only way is to realize that what He has done and, and grace-based parenting is to realize that at the end of the day, mummies and daddies, you know, don't sweat it out. You know, trying to raise your children uh, in the right way, 
just realize that God is already working in them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when you talk to them, tell them, look, you know, uh, you're a Jesus boy. Yeah. And a Jesus boy does not tell lies. Mm. You're better than this. You see, you're starting from a, uh, from a position of trust right. that God has really done something in their life. And He has. Yes. And you're calling it forth. Yeah. I'll say, Justin, you're better than this. Mm. Justin, we don't tell lies because we are Jesus people. Mm. Mm. Amen? We're mm. like mm. prince. Mm. And, and, and Jessica, you are a princess. And that's what I, we affirm about our children. Instead of this, you got to be. All right, if you want to do this, you got to be. And, and that kind of uh, law-based uh, parenting is going to raise uh, uh, rebels. Yeah. Wow. You know, I remember a story that um, Max Licato tells about his daughter that when she was in school, and I won't tell it perfectly right, but here's the gist of it. Um, she just... She just said, Dad, I cannot do this class. This class is just too hard for me, and I'm going to fail it. And she was just, you know, dire straits about this, this class she was taking to. So he went to the school with her, and the teacher just looked at her, and she said, what if I told you you've already got an A-plus in this mm. class? Yeah. And she just said, what? She said, I'm already giving you an A plus in this class. Mm -hmm. Now do your thing. Learn, yes. learn what you can. And he, he brought that to the grace message is we're, we've already yes. completing, like you said, completing Christ. We already have everything we need. Yeah. We already and, and have all his love. That's the thing. Every time, every time we put it back on our children, we put it back on the people. Like for example, it's contingent on you to be in the place where you are protected. Yeah. Anything that depends on us, we always feel apprehensive about yeah. because we are never too sure. But if it depends on Him, on right. Jesus, on Christ, right. it's a sure, yeah. you know, because the devil can, can find fault with us. Yeah. He can never, never find fault with Jesus. <laughs> right. You know, and the Bible says, as He is, so are we in this mm -hmm. world. So the focus should be on Him. Yeah. In our preaching, in our parenting and all that, the Bible says, bring up your children in the admonition of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the last part. Husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church. You bring Jesus into the marriage. Yeah. Uh, how did Jesus love the church? Like this. Yeah. He gave His life for her. All right. Wives, submit to your husband as unto Jesus. Mm. Look behind the rascal. I mean, look behind the guy and you see Jesus there. <laughs> right. And you submit as if unto Jesus. Yes. You bring the Lord into every situation mm -hmm. and the bitter waters become sweet. Okay. <laughs> Had dinner with Pastor Prince the other night and he came up with a very wonderful suggestion. My little sweet children. And the torch will pass to them. Pastor Prince, would you come, sir? And uh, Samuel Smadja. <clears throat> I have come to love this dear man very much. I, I've been watching you, but I had never had the privilege of meeting you personally. And uh, I have learned a little more about grace, you might imagine than I knew before, and I thank you for that, sir. My dad, uh, who got to have a, a, a meal with you, Joseph, in, in, in Israel one night, which was just an amazing event that led to a, a beautiful ceremony that we got to be a part of uh, back in 2012 that uh, was just such a precious moment. And and so, look, we go way back, and we, we you know, I kind of, understand where we're where we're headed with this but I my dad would say that he had to get saved every Sunday okay. night yeah. mm -hmm. okay and so he would feel this gripping conviction mm -hmm. to confess everything he had done that week as a 14 year old boy in a Sunday night service and and there was just this masses amounts of conviction so Condemnation. What, condemnation. So, yeah. so what, what I think we're talking about is there was a time when people were surrendering their life to Jesus, but maybe as a bus ticket to heaven. They yeah. didn't know the love of Jesus. They weren't mm. taught the, 
the goodness of God. It was, mm -hmm. it was hellfire. And, you know, it was like, you know, hellfire (laughs) dangling your butt over the, you know, the fires here. (laughs) Nice, nice little illustrated sermon here. Uh, But my dad, you know, growing up was taught that many of our viewers were taught that you accept Jesus and then you have to repent every Sunday night to stay saved. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the funny thing is funny now, probably wasn't funny then, but <laughs> my, my dad saying that his mother told him, if you go to a movie theater and the Lord comes back, he'll leave you there. You know, you won't yeah. go to heaven from there. Okay. So we're talking about really this massive subject when we mm-hmm. say graced based. So if you zoom back all the way from just what did we say or what did we mean or what did what did this experience of saying a prayer mm-hmm. of salvation what start at the very beginning for somebody that just wants to hear the very foundational message of the gospel of grace. Yep. If you look um, I like to illustrate I think it's easier for people to understand. If you look at on the Passover night, the very first Passover in in Egypt when God told the children of Israel to put the, the blood on the doorposts and on the lintel, making up the cross, yeah. the blood, and God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. But imagine there are two houses, right? And they have the blood on their doorposts. They are, they are both Israeli families, uh, Israelites, and, and they have the blood on the doorposts. However, one family is trembling in their boots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the, the father is, is, is desperate and, and the, the son is asking, will we die? I'm the firstborn. Will I die? Will I die tonight? And, uh, and uh, the other family is singing praises mm-hmm. throughout the night, eating the roasted lamb and, and worshiping God and say, don't worry. All right. When God sees the blood, he will pass over us. The next morning, which family is saved? Mm, the one worshiping. Both. Both. Oh, wait. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both are safe because why? It we is the need blood. That teacher, go I, ahead. I, it is the blood. I, 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 yeah. I don't think I was <laughs> It is the blood. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it yeah. can be like a trick question, but <laughs> the thing is that God says, when I see the blood, not not your faith, not even your your you know, we put faith in our faith, but God says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Mm. Now the blood of Jesus has been shed. Mm. If we believe that His blood washes away our sins, and we confess that. Okay, God calls that faith. Yeah. But it's not for us to call faith, faith. It's for us to look at the blood and say, the blood saves. Okay, mm. and God says, when you say the blood saves, I see your faith. Mm. It's for us to see the blood. And, and I think that uh, we need to understand it's nothing to do with us. The blood has been shed. Now, we can, we can uh, be in fear and trepidation the entire night, and uh, we wasted our emotions. Wow. We just waste our stress and worry and care when actually we are as safe as the blood has been put. The question is, is the blood put on your family's doorpost? Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the question. Mm-hmm. If the blood is there, now the other family enjoyed their salvation. Mm. They enjoyed their deliverance, but they were no more safe than the family that was in right. fear, right. in stress. So I think that we need to come back to uh, the work of Jesus. The focus is on Him and not on us. We are saved by seeing that Christ bore our sins and took our judgments. His blood has been shed. Amen. So for the first time, uh, on the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, the blood is sprinkled on the mercy seat. And I have a picture of the uh, angel's wings, the cherubim, because that's the secret place of the Most High. Mm-hmm. Uh, back then, when David talked about the secret place of the Most High, he would go into the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle of David. There's no veil. Yeah. And God is restoring the tabernacle of David in these last days. And he will worship before the Lord, right between the cherubim at the blood-sprinkled seat. When blood is on the seat, the angels, or the, excuse me, the cherubim, their eyes represent God's eyes. Mm. So for the first time, underneath the mercy seat is the, the elements of rebellion. Man has rejected God's provision of manna. They complain. You have the golden pot of manna inside the ark. God reject, uh, man rejected God's standard of holiness, which is the Ten Commandments. Mm. They are there the two tablets in the, in the ark. Uh, man rejected God's appointed leadership. Aaron, they murmured when Aaron, the, the rod that budded is also there. Mm. So all these three elements of man's rebellion, God says, put it under the mercy seat. Mm. 
and when blood is sprinkled on it, God does not see man's rebellion. Wow. Mm. God does not see our sin. God sees the blood. Yeah. And that's one thing God's eyes cannot penetrate. God's, I mean, He can see the intents of our hearts. He can see through solid rock. He can see right through the mountain. He can see everything, but there's one thing His blood cannot see through. And that's mm. the blood of Jesus. Mm. Beautiful. And God ordained it to be like that. And the question is, is the blood applied to your family? doorpost? Is it applied to your heart? Mm. Have you availed yourself of the blood? If once you have done so, you are one drop of the blood of Jesus can wipe away your sins, uh, the sins of your entire life, lifetime, yes. yeah. past, present and future. talking about is accepting the finished work of the cross, believing it, understanding it, and living in protection and peace yes. because of it. Yes. If somebody wants that, Joseph, your camera, can you uh, uh, just look right into the camera there? And there's somebody that's been listening to this and drawn by whatever, but yeah. they want to accept this. Yeah. And there they are. I just want to say that uh, there is a place of protection. Uh, you know, when you read all the new, see all the news and you read the news nowadays, you know, I can understand when fear comes into your heart for your children, for yourself. But the thing that we need to realize is that God will not leave His people without His provision. And God has made ample provision, much more grace than there is sin, than there is the problem. And uh, the place that we are talking about, the secret place of the Most High, where the, we have angelic protection, where we abide under the shadow of God's uh, wings, where He protects us and your children uh, can be in that place. Just remember this, that it all starts with you being born again. You need to be in the family of God. So if not done so, just pray a prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Thank you, your blood has washed away all my sins. Now, once you do that, you are saved because it's the blood that saves you. It's not your nice prayers that save you. You can believe God for protection because the same way you are saved by grace through faith, the same way God's protection comes on you, mm. by grace through faith. And you can pray that there's one thing, however, I need to, to just uh, do a caveat by saying this. God has not promised that He will uh, protect us from persecution. Now that you are a believer, you will be persecuted by those who don't understand, by those who are not saved, by those who are, uh, who are you know, the enemy will persecute, persecute you. He will use people to say things again. So that's one thing that we, the Bible says, in fact, the Bible promises all that live godly shall suffer persecution. Mm. So that's the only thing that we are to suffer from. When I read my Bible right, that's the only thing that we are to suffer from. Yeah. All that live godly shall suffer persecution. But I don't see in the Bible that we are to suffer those things that Jesus bore for us at the cross. I don't see in the Bible where it says that we are to suffer sickness, even though many of us are sick, but we need to find out God's provision for us and keep on tuning, keep on hearing, because the answers are here, as we are discussing from God's Word, how you can find that place, because you are already in that place. It's not a matter of finding it, it's a matter of having your eyes opened by the Spirit to realize you are in that place. So what you pray is that, Father, I thank you I'm in the secret place of the Most High. Read Psalms 91. Yeah. And all the promises there is for you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. No evil shall befall me, nor my family. No plague will come near my dwelling. Every time you take a plane or you go, you go traveling, thank you, Father. A thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand. It will not come near me because you have given your angels charge over me. Even promises long life. Right at the end, it says with long life. So tell the Lord, Father, I thank you because I'm in Christ in the secret place. With long life, you satisfy me. Yeah. It feels like the grace message is new, but it's not new, no. it's old. Yes. Why does it feel new to some of us? Well, you know, I feel like uh, because of the um, abundance of teachings that teach otherwise, hmm. you know, when, when, when uh, you, you go to an environment where, you know, everyone is like, uh, 
uh, topless, for example, you know, uh, by the beach and all that, and you come in fully clothed, you know, you feel abnormal, right? <laughs> but the, the... I feel just the, right. <laughs> the, yeah, the normal life, the, yeah, but, you know, our young people and all that, they, they are actually in the environment where everyone is doing the, the wrong right. thing, so right. you feel abnormal, you right. know? So that, that's why when, when normalcy comes in, you, it feels like normalcy is new, you know? Mm. So, but I think that the good news is that when darkness covers the earth and there is loose laxness and immorality everywhere, mm. the people get jaded, mm. you know? When they get jaded, there's hope for us because yeah. people are spiritually hungry when they are yeah. jaded. They're dissatisfied. You know? Been there, done yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Uh, what else is new, yeah. you know? There's a beautiful uh, uh, analogy given by Paul in the book of Galatians where it says that, that Mount Sinai is like Hagar. Hagar corresponds to Mount Sinai, mm. which produces bondage. Mm. We know that the Ten Commandments is from Mount Sinai. But it says that Sarah is the mother of us all. So mm. Sarah is grace. Hagar is law yeah. that came from Mount Sinai. Now, Abraham had two sons. One is Ishmael and one is Isaac. They both had the same father, but not the same mother. Okay? So they are brothers from another mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Um, but the thing is this. Today we have the same thing. It's the son of the law. The mother is law that persecuted him who was born of grace. Mm. They share the same heavenly father. So today our, our brothers who persecute us mm -hmm. for preaching this, they have the same heavenly father. Just that their mama is grace. I mean, mama is law and ours is grace. Mm -hmm. So, so it feels, bondage or free. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it feels like, whoa, you know, what's this teaching and it's mm -hmm. new and all because of base. I think there's a lot of sincerity. A lot of people are honest, yeah. but honestly wrong because we are focused on the, instead of Jesus, we focus on ourselves. Yes. How, how can anything be secure if you depend on yourself? You shared with me about your experience in Iraq a number of years mm -hmm. ago. If you're, your protection depends on you. Can you really be secure? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't have. So yeah. to respond to that, I was sitting, getting ready to board an airplane from Amman, Jordan into Baghdad, Iraq. And my father had invited me on the trip. I had a young wife, still have a young wife, Amen. but <laughs> had a younger wife then. And much younger, smaller boys. And when my dad invited me to Baghdad, I instantly just said, oh, heck yeah, I'm going to Baghdad with you. That's awesome. Well, then I get there to Amman, and we're getting ready to literally go, and fear gripped me, and super unusual for me. And I was sitting there just dwelling on this. Hap I don't know why all of a sudden, and maybe this has happened to somebody else, but- Because you needed this revelation. Thank you. Right? Well, obviously, yeah, yeah. I, I needed it. I needed it right then really right. bad because right. I was literally boarding an airplane for Baghdad and I said to myself, I didn't pray about this. Mm. I didn't, you know, I just accepted my dad's invitation. I'm now here mm -hmm. and I'm wondering. So this was the thought that hit, have I been good enough mm -hmm. for God to protect me mm. while I'm in you know, in you Baghdad. Go. And so I don't know why that thought hit me, but that's what hit me. And I mean, I'm sitting there wondering if I should even go and what would I even do if I wanted to back out? Could I even back out? You know, what, where, where, where would I stay? And, and, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden in that really contemplation of that panicky little moment mm -hmm. there, the Lord, I didn't hear a voice, I don't think, in the room, but it might have well have been because I heard it'll never be about whether you, what, what you, you have or have not goodness. done. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It'll never be what you have or have not done, but what I did. Mm -hmm. And so the idea hit me that all of a sudden I felt kind of corrected, mm -hmm. but the correction felt so beautiful because beautiful. it yeah. washed the anxiety away. Yeah. And we went to Baghdad, experienced one of the funnest, most amazing trips. Uh, it, it's one of the most memorable times. It was 2004, uh, you know, active combat was still going on in, in Iraq. And, and so 
basically that's how the Lord taught this to mm -hmm. us. Right. But even before that, we felt it. It was something yeah. inside of us. And it feels, I've said this a thousand mm -hmm. times, like your books yeah. put words to what we felt on the inside. I think that, that there is a fear though Mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone knows that you have to live a, a, a holy life mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. sin is sin yes. and that we cannot just go and live nope. however we want and nope. still feel like God's hand of, is on yes. us and still live in grace. That's a huge fear for people. And yes. so people go, no, 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 can't teach too much grace right, right. because then they're all going to go start sinning and all these young people are right, going right. to derail. Exactly. Now, um, have you noticed just now that there is correction in grace? Like Matt said it so beautifully. I think he was unconscious even when he said it. He said that it was a correction. When the Lord said to him, it will never be about what you do or what you have not done. Mm. It's all about what I have done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And straight away he was corrected. So there is correction in grace, mm -hmm. but God does not correct you with, with accidents and car wrecks and right. disease and sickness. That's how he corrects you. Yeah. But it is a correction. But it's still uplifting when God corrects you. Yes. Right? You, you, you learn, you, it humbles you, mm -hmm. you have a right perspective, but it corrects you. So there is correction. And the fear that people have, let me come back to the analogy of what Paul's, uh, Paul talked about in Galatians when he says that Hagar, the mother mm -hmm. of Ishmael, is th the law. And Grace is Sarah, the mother of Isaac. Right? And we know who the inheritance went to. Right. Yeah. right? So, but the thing is this, what we are, in essence saying, like what to address that uh, question, the fear that people have uh, that grace will give license to sin. Actually, the Bible says the, the strength of sin is the law. Wow. Mm. Wow. 1 Corinthians 15, 56, the strength, and the Greek word is dunamis, dynamite of sin is the law. Remove the law and guess what happens? Sin loses its power. Mm. Wow. But the thing is like, back to this analogy, it's almost like saying, we need to bring, the Bible says, what's the final answer? Paul says, cast out the born woman. Mm. Sarah says, cast out the born woman and her son. For the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son. Mm. And God says, Abraham, listen to your wife. Mm. There's one time we find that God says, listen to your wife. That's Submit the to your only wife. time. Too. The only yeah. time? But, but you know what the Bible <laughs> says? You know what the Bible says? It was scripture. What say, of, <laughs> what say of the scripture? Her yeah. word became scripture. Yeah. Yeah. What say of the scripture? Mm. Cast out the born woman and a son. Yeah. Take the, the whole law thing. It has been fulfilled. It's, it is now antiquated. Mm. We are no more under it. And, and bring it. But what, what people are saying is that, no, 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 no. Grace alone is not enough to bring up my son. Mm. Sarah alone is not enough. Let's bring Hagar back to the house. Mm. We need the law to, and grace and law, you know, they can do their part. Grace will show the love yeah. and law will bring the discipline. No, no, no. The Bible is very clear. Cast out the bond woman and son mm. for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir. Mm. It's about heirship. It's about inheritance. Mm. If that woman and her son is not removed from the house, Isaac cannot inherit. Mm. And the reason a lot of believers cannot inherit what has been accomplished for them at the cross, whether right. it's healing, whether it's protection, whether it's, it's breakthroughs in the area of finances and all that, is because they are trying to earn it. Yeah. By the law. They still have the law in their hearts. They still yeah. have the law. They're making room for both. <clears throat> and the Bible says there's no room for both. We don't need Hagar to bring up Isaac. Yeah. Mm. Sarah is enough. Yeah. Sarah is good enough. Grace is able to teach. And Grace is an amazing teacher. So the sin consciousness, that's what Jesus wow. died for. Exactly. The, to take away the sin consciousness. Sin and also free. once you know the sin is paid for. Yeah. I think many a times it's like the analogy of drawing money from ATM, okay? Let's say if, go, if I go to the ATM and uh, I don't have a million dollars in my ATM, okay? Right. So I'm using my analogy, okay? <laughs> uh, not Matt, so I'm using... Oh. Now, <laughs> if I go to the uh, ATM and I draw the ATM yeah. uh, money and all of a sudden I see available balance is a million dollars. Wait a minute. I look at it again. I don't believe, right? Yeah. Wait a minute. You know, what's going on? You know, it's like, wow, a million. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I'm rejoicing. I'm doing the jig, uh, the charismatic dance. You know? <laughs> but after what? The wait a minute sets in. You know, the, the moment the wait a minute mm -hmm. stops, wait a minute, or the dance stops. How did that get there? Mm. So I cannot have unbounded joy as long as I do not know how it got there. 
Uh, maybe wow. it was a talus mistake. Maybe someone, wow. you know. Yeah. And I have to find out what is legit. And I make a call to the bank. And the bank says, well, we have checked everything and everything seems to be in order. Is somebody, somebody who loved you, mm. told us he loved you and he deposited a million dollars into your bank. Wow. Mm. So it's all legit. Yeah. Now I can have really unrestrained rejoice. joy. Yeah. Yeah. I know why it's there. So many times the teaching that I bring is just to tell people, you can tell people, you know, you got to have joy, you know, you got to have uh, 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 faith and all that. But they say, you know, God doesn't condemn you, but they don't know. But why is it God doesn't condemn me? Why, why can I have unbounded joy? Why can I trust Him? Okay, my, my teaching is just telling you why it's legit. Mm. I break it down to show you why you can believe God, why you can know there's no condemnation by unveiling the work of Jesus at the cross. This teaching is so rich and so amazing, and the camera angles, look, I can't help it. I was an old director. I came up through the direction. I can tell uh, that right before you took your sunglasses off, I could tell that the sun was just about to touch the mountain, and this is one of the most beautiful things. This is something I've been looking forward to for a long time, to sit here at this kind of magic hour of the evening and be hearing about the amazing mm. person of Jesus Christ, looking at this amazing visual and hearing about the most amazing thing mm -hmm. on earth. Okay, yes. so in this last five or so minutes and as the sun sets here in Western Colorado, give a, a um, just, your kind of final thoughts on what we've been talking about where understanding the events of the cross and the redemption of the cross and moving it in and applying it to protection. Your final thoughts on that. And then if you would, sir, just pray for our audience uh, as the sun sinks on this beautiful mm -hmm. December day, by the way, if you're viewing this for the first time, we're December 2nd, 2019. And uh, this is not prop snow. Uh, and Joseph, you can confirm that. It's a little cool out here, but yes. beautiful. That's real snow. You're from Singapore, but anyway, this is a big day for me. Your final five minutes or so is yours, sir, please. I would like to say that uh, um, you mentioned a bus ticket just now. And you know, it's important that we realize that with the bus ticket or any ticket, that comes with it benefits. You, you might take the bus and you just, they just you know, take the journey there. But actually it comes with all the food package and mm -hmm. you know, a special massage on board <laughs> and all that. But because really? we don't realize what the ticket entitles us to, we just think of salvation is deliverance from hell. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what you were saying, the, uh, um, the previous generation and, and the people who didn't realize uh, more about what the scriptures tell us about Christ's finished work. But I want to say this to you. If you're watching this and you're feeling depressed, just like Matt shared just now about the fear he had, all of a sudden, that's how the devil attacks us. You know, he attacks with fear that causes depression. And I feel like some of you are, are really in deep depression. I just want to say that it's all because the devil has turned your eyes within. You have turned into yourself. Am I enough? Am I doing this enough? Even when you're doing right, you're praying. He says, you have not prayed enough. So you, you end up being self-occupied, looking at your thoughts, looking at your, your words, and you're so self-occupied becomes depression. It's very painful to be self-occupied. But the answer is to be Christ-occupied, to look at Him and to finish work. When we say look at Him, how do you see Him? Well, we see Him in the, in the Word of God as the Savior of the world. During this uh, Christmas season, Right, I, I love to say what the angel said mm -hmm. to uh, the people, all right, the shepherds at that time. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Savior. Not a judge, hmm. not a lawgiver, but a Savior. In fact, his name Jesus means Savior. Mm -hmm. And all, all he, he wants you to do is to just consent to be saved. You know, Jesus shared about uh, uh, a, a shepherd, a good shepherd that left the 99 sheep that he had because one sheep was lost. Now, number one, no shepherd would do that. No shepherd would leave 99 to find the one that's lost. He would just 
factor in his loss and take care of the 99. But he will not suffer that one to be lost. Mm. He sought out the lost sheep. He found the sheep, put it on his strong shoulders. Wow, beautiful. And then when he came back, you know what he did? He called his neighbors and said, let's have a party. No shepherd does that. I found the sheep that was lost. Now Jesus said, likewise, there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Repents? Repents. How did the sheep repent? Now here's a great teaching on repentance. The sheep did not do anything. Hmm. The shepherd sought the sheep. The shepherd found the sheep. The shepherd carried the sheep and put it on his shoulders. The shepherd brought him home safely. And the shepherd celebrated. The shepherd did everything. But there's one thing the sheep did. The sheep consented yeah. to be loved, to be cared for, to be carried. So all the Lord wants is your permission to allow Him to love you, to believe that He's loving you, amen, that you are His beloved, and to allow Him to carry you. Mm. Learn to relax. Whenever your prayers get desperate, learn to say, no, it's not based on me, mm. I let go. In fact, this letting go is a constant uh, laboring. In fact, there's an oxymoron in the Bible in Hebrews 4. It says, let us labor to enter the rest. Hmm. So our only labor is to enter the rest. Wow. Our only fight is fight the good fight of faith. faith. The only fight is to remain in faith. Come on. That's the only fight. Your only labor is to remain in rest. Anything, any thought that comes in, any, 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 anyone that says anything to you that makes you feel like... Uh, I, I got to do something. I got to fight an <laughs> enemy that's not yet defeated. Mm. I got to defeat him. You have de been defeated even before you start. Mm. All right? The way you, you do it, no, no, no. I'm not going to fight him. He's defeated. And we enforce it. Devil, you're defeated. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus did the work. Amen. We, we speak the word of God because Thank we God. know the work is finished. Yeah. So I just want to say this to you. If you are worried about your family, your loved ones, your, your children, uh, in a world that we live in today and all, there's a place of protection. Amen. The Bible says, Psalms 91 verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me pray for you. But remember this, amen. You cannot be fearing your way and, uh, and, and, and trust and consent to Him loving you because His perfect love will cast out the fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love and fear, the opposite of fear is not faith. It's actually love. Love cast out fear. Amen. When you realize He loves you perfectly, by the way, perfect love is not our love. Right. None of us can love perfectly. Perfect love is His love for us. It's not our love for Him. We don't love Him perfectly, but He loves us perfectly. When you realize that, the perfect love will cast out the fear. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, I pray for everyone that's viewing this right now. If there's anyone, Lord, during this Christmas season, Lord, that's tuning, tuning in and they do not know Jesus, the wonderful Saviour, your Son, who was sent to be the Saviour, not the judge, not the lawgiver, but the Saviour. Oh, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that they'll pray this prayer right now, Lord, as they are watching. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for all my sins. I believe you bore all my judgment and you took all my sins and you sent them away. There's no more sins left in my life because they have all been remitted. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you rose from the dead to demonstrate that what you did for me has been efficacious because you bore my sins and then you rose again without them. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Lord and Saviour. And for those of you who want God to put His protection on you and His family, just pray this prayer, something like this. And you can pray this every day. Father, I thank you. I'm in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me and my family. There shall no evil befall me and my family, and no plague will come near me and my family all throughout this day. Thank you, Father. With long life, you satisfy me and my loved ones because I'm in the secret place of the Most High. I'm in Christ at your right hand, seated far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. Thank you, Father. I rest in this place where you love me all day long. Thank you, Father. Teach me more and more, Lord, how to rest in Christ all the rest of my life, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful. Beautiful.
Wow. <laughs> and a son. What a day. <laughs> what a day. To, uh, Sila. <laughs> to be able to talk about the most amazing subject there is, Grace, oh. with Joseph Prince. Thank you for being here, Joseph. What an amazing Thanks for having me, Madam Lowe. The sun has tipped behind the mountain, and uh, so it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you, Pastor, for being with us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.